Hello everyone and welcome to Research and Rajma. Today we are going to be talking about one of the questions I am asked the most by UG students about research and that is how to choose a research topic. I am Ocean Behel and this video is in collaboration with the Student Research Council of Mimer. They come up with a bunch of things that UG students can participate in and I am going to be talking about that at the end of this video. I'm very excited that this is the first research video in a series of videos that I am calling UG Research 101. So I hope it helps. Just a short disclaimer. So a lot of you may have the question about where to start with research. Is it with the questionnaire? Do you have to start learning how to write the paper or is it one of our most favorite topics, that is biostatistics. Well, you have to start with the research question. And that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So the objectives of today's video are coming up with a research topic that's valid, the role of literature research in finding a research topic, the five pillars of a good research topic I've come up with this, so copyright. <laughs> and a flowchart that I've made to help you with this very difficult task of coming up with a research topic. Any research serves to answer a knowledge gap. Now, what is this knowledge gap that everyone keeps talking about? It is quite literally an area of lack of information in the scientific field. No, this is not the ideal definition, but this is precisely what it is. This can be something such as are the prevalence, incidence, diagnostic process, etc, etc of a disease not known. But since we are UG students, it's quite difficult to answer such vast questions. So what we can do is narrow it down whether such a thing can happen in a particular geographical area, in a certain age group, in a certain occupational group, etc, etc. Another type of a knowledge gap is whether a previous research has failed to answer a certain question. And this could be from a subject of your interest or from a subject that is taught by a student friendly professor, because this will help you to get a guide. And I think we all know what a student friendly professor means. Now we have to go from a knowledge gap to a research question. Now how exactly are we going to do this? First we need to ask ourselves is this gap coverable and this is also known as the feasibility of a research question. There are three types of feasibility that you need to think about. The first one is sample feasibility that is can I reach this sample size? Is this sample size available in the area that I'm planning to research? The second one is temporal or time feasibility. Do I have enough time? Will I be able to keep up with the follow-ups of this disease I'm planning to research? And the third one is participation feasibility. That is, are the participants going to be motivated to put in the efforts as in if there is no incentive, then is anyone even going to participate in this research? To answer these questions for sample feasibility, you can talk to your professor and find out if you have those patients. For temporal feasibility, what I usually suggest is to stick to studies that require maximum two months, especially for undergraduate students who are beginners in research. What you can also do, and this is a mean trick, and that is to back calculate from a submission date. For, for example, ICMR has a submission date in January, so maybe you should start by August. The third kind is participation feasibility. That is, do you have funding to provide incentive to the participants? Or more feasibly, can you provide services that are in your domain? 
For example, you can provide a health camp and during that health camp, you can find out things. A feasible research question then needs to lead to a unique research question. So to come up with a unique research question, you need to ask yourself two things. The first thing is to conduct a literature search to answer a bunch of questions. That is, whether this has been done before, how, where, when was this done, and what did they find out? And the last but not the least is, for example, for cross-sectional studies, you can even find out the sample required. More on this on another video. So, where do you do this literature search? There is a long list of sources that you can do it on, but I personally prefer PubMed. Other sources for UG students are PubMed, Google Scholar, ResearchGate, and SciHub, which has open access to all publications. The second question you need to ask yourself is how important is this research question? Will this help another researcher in the future? Does it have direct clinical implications? Because you need to understand that just because it hasn't been done yet doesn't mean that it needs to be done or it is necessary. So now we have covered feasibility, innovation and necessity. Now what next? Ethics. I know it's not a favorite topic, but let's get ethical. The ethical considerations for a research question are, firstly, does it violate the ethical principles of research? Now, I'm not going to get into the detail of this, but some ethical principles are consent, autonomy, transparency, etc. I'm going to leave a link for a document that you can read up on on ethical considerations of research in the description. If this gets too technical for you, then consult the ethical committee through your guide. The institutional ethical committee of your college will give you clearance for your study before you start. But all this is getting a little boring, isn't it? Trust me, research in general can be really boring with the clearances, the approval, the data collection, the data entry, the statistical formulae, and much more. So something that you need to remember is that your research should excite you. <laughs> Trust me. And this is a very accurate representation of my situation every time I am doing a project. So to summarize, it's fine. That is F-I-N-E. Remember, anytime you're choosing a research topic, First see its feasibility, then see if it's innovative, then see if it's necessary, and then look at the ethical considerations and if you're feeling enthusiastic about it. Go ahead and choose your research topic now. Here is a flowchart that I've created just for you, which you can refer to to choose your research topic. Now, I know it'll look a little complicated at first, but I will go through it with you. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, is there something that you're wondering about or you have seen and you couldn't find the answer to? If the answer to this is yes, then talk to a professor or a researcher. You can reach out to me if you want, but in the end, you are going to need a guide from your college. Once you've spoken to an experienced researcher, they will tell you if it's feasible or not. If it is, then do a literature search to find out if it's innovative and necessary. If so, then get a guide and start making a proposal to submit to the ethical committee. They will tell you if it is ethically sound or not. If the answer is yes, then congratulations, you have a research topic. Don't get demotivated if any of these steps lead to the answer no, because there are ways to go around this, but just don't give up. Just a quick announcement for everybody. 
The Mimer Student Research Council is holding a Research for All webinar and symposium on the 30th of May and 6th of June respectively. So if you are interested to know how to present your research or if you want to present your research, then the last date for abstract submission for the same 